Hi friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel and in today's video I will be reading four or five uh, taboo slash dark romances that I said I was going to read this year that I just didn't end up doing. So if you uh, didn't see, I did a video reacting to the list of authors slash books that I wanted to get to on my dark and taboo list by the end of the year and I did there was only a couple that I missed. Um, I'm a terrible filmer and I missed a bunch in the actual reaction portion. <laughs> first up, um, I've started a, a several of them. Uh, so first up, I am 50% of the way through Tide. And I think on that list I actually had the first one in this series, but I don't really want to read that one. Uh, but this one is about Holly who at five years old was kidnapped and 12 years later she is found by Tyler in the woods um, and he is mute and he is also scarred and she he saves her life and then we fast forward two years and she has been living in a um I guess a group home is the best way to describe it and they end up running they end up reconnecting and at this 50% mark they have kind of formed a friendship um neither of them are very good at interacting socially with other people holly still has obviously a lot of trauma and things to work through um from her kidnapping and tyler's trauma is like slowly being revealed uh so it he used to be the popular kid used to be like a jock and all that in high school and then at a party he was shoved into a fire and it burned a portion of his body he basically gets dumped by all of his friends he gets addicted to drugs and he's sober now but obviously he still has like the trauma around that and all of the the bad feelings about basically being viewed as an outcast by their town and Holly is struggling to create a family friend, a family relationship with her family because she obviously didn't live with them for the majority of her life. And she's come back and particularly her mother uh, is being just bad. Um, she just wants, like her mother wants everything to go back to normal and she doesn't want to acknowledge the things that Holly's been through. She doesn't want to talk about them. She doesn't want any part of the things that Holly's been through to be acknowledged. Like she wants Holly to just move on and that be that. Um, and so Holly and Holly has like this hero worship for Tyler because he's the one that saved her. Um, and so they end up sparking up this friendship because she was given a dog by her kidnapper and he ends up taking the dog in once she's rescued. And so they bond over this dog uh, and now they have sort of like a friendship and it's good. Uh, it took a lot, a little bit for me to get into the writing and by that I mean I had to pick up the audiobook because the author writes in first person present and past tense like in the same sentence. Uh, so it's quite, it's quite overwhelming to try to read. Um, and it's good. Like it's, it's a good angsty I guess it's not really angsty because there isn't too much angst in the relationship um they're kind of just forming like this friendship and bonding over um you know they haven't really talked through their trauma but like obviously they know each other's has some um issues so they are working together uh and they have similar reactions and similar fears and things like that um, so they work together to like have this friendship that's just nice and like something that neither of them can really have No one they don't have anybody in their life that understands trauma and how they might react to Like the people around them and stuff. So it's it's fine uh, And then I got about 10% of the way through maybe next time This was actually the book that I was talking about when I made my video um, for some reason I thought anti up was the one that was like darker or like mafia possibly i don't think that this one is mafia but it's about a guy who kidnaps his wife after she tries to divorce him and the first 10 percent incredibly hot uh it's only like 94 pages but the heroine comes home kenza comes home and her her ex-husband denver is in her house and they kind of uh angry fuck and then that's all we've read, but Christina C. Jones's chemistry between characters is always fantastic. 
the majority of the time the issue that I have with her stories is like alternate issues like um things to do with the plot and stuff like that uh that's that's kind of where she loses me but her characters their chemistry is always fantastic and I'm very excited to continue reading uh and get to their relationship I love marriage and trouble and I'm excited to go I'm, I'm excited to continue reading because the chemistry is just off the charts and I think he might be mafia I'm not 100% sure and then I also got about uh 3% of the way through praise um this is a ex-boyfriend's father praise kink story and in the beginning of the story the heroine goes to the her ex-husband her ex boyfriend's father to get the deposit back on her apartment and he mistakes her for a sub like an like a secretary or something like that uh but I haven't gotten quite that far and I've just gotten her first chapter where her ex-boyfriend tells her to go talk to him about the deposit um very hesitant to read this one I my reading over the last like five or six months has really changed uh, I would say mostly with, within the last five months has really really changed I am craving less and less like deeply or repetitively sexual stories and I want them to get together like 60% of the way through and I want them to um, not it's and not to be so focused on the sex uh so that's kind of just what i've been craving from stories and i'm not finding that with um with the romances that i'm that i have that have been like popular and or what i've been picking up within the last five months um so i'm getting away from these types of stories unfortunately uh and looking for something deeper that's not to say that this is not deep it very well could be but from what i've heard this is very sex heavy and that's like the main focus of the story so i've been very hesitant to pick it up because when i first heard it when it first got popular i thought i was gonna absolutely love it uh and i still could but i'm just i'm a little bit hesitant uh going in so those are three of the books that I'm reading for this video. I'm also going to be reading Sin and Discipline, um, which is a book that I tried a chapter tag. I tried a chapter of in my try chapter tag video and I wasn't in love with it, but I have heard it compared to Dark Notes, which comparing anything to a Pam Godwin is just completely unfair. Um, but that's what I've heard it compared to. And it's like student teacher, something to do with music. Wasn't gripped by the first chapter, but I do want to still give it a try. And then the last book I will be reading is Priest. Um, and I am hesitant about this one as well because I've heard similar things as what I said about Praise, um, where it's just very sex heavy. I'm not really too pressed about like the content but I'm feeling uh, hesitant about the sexual component uh, of the story so I hope that the plot um, carries the story or the the, re the romantic relationship rather like the connection between the characters carries the story enough and it's just not all sex um, I was going to read Fit, which was the last book that I had on this list that I hadn't read. Uh, it's part of Rebecca Weatherspoon's BDSM Club series, and I loved, loved, loved her like Mountain Man series. I can't remember exactly what it's called, but I've read all the books, and I, I, I don't think I've given a single Rebecca Weatherspoon less than three, less than four stars. Um, so I was going to read that one as well, but I can't find it anywhere and I don't purchase ebooks. So um, I, maybe one day if it comes across free or it comes on Kindle Unlimited, I'll give it a shot. Or if I can find it on a platform somewhere, I'll give it a shot. But at the moment, I'll be holding off on that one. Um, so I'm going to get back into these I don't know which one I'm gonna pick up I likely will go with maybe uh, another time or maybe one time or something like that because that's the one that's like I'm most interested in at the moment uh, it gripped me the most of all of the ones that I've started um, so I probably will start that one but we'll talk when I'm through something and have some thoughts hi friends it's been a couple of days since I updated you but I do have some um, updates <laughs> on things that I was reading for this video. So I did end up finishing 
um, Maybe Next Time, I think is what it's called. And I gave this five stars. It was super good. It's everything that I wanted out of a Marriage in Trouble um, second chance. It was swoony. It was romantic. It was sexy. It was um, all of those things. It was funny. I found myself laughing sometimes and I just was very excited to get to their, uh, you, you know, reunion and see them work through all of their issues. The things that they were struggling with as a, as a couple are very common issues and I think the way that they worked through it was really beautiful and relatable and there's therapy in this which is fantastic. Uh, there is a trigger warning for miscarriage in this, um, but I just thought it was so well done. Definitely my favorite, Christina C. Jones. Um, and then I ended up finishing Tied as well. I don't know how much I updated you about with this one, um, but I know I talked to you when I was at the 50% mark, but I did end up finishing it and like it was sweet, it was cute, it was good, but it just wasn't everything that I wanted from it. When we're talking about stories like this where it's like deeply, it's deeply rooted in trauma and things like that, I want to be working through the trauma together. Um, and it more was like them working through their issues around relationships because of their trauma, if that makes sense. But because we jumped forward two years after the heroine had been rescued, we didn't really see a lot of that growth. Like she did it in that two year jump. Um, and she still felt very immature and that kind of felt icky to me. Like I definitely felt like she needed more growth before she even considered getting into a romantic relationship. Um, so it's definitely not the best story I've read with this plot or with similar plots like this. Um, but I can see like why people would absolutely love this. It has all of the threads of what that makes like in my opinion a good romance. It just didn't do everything that I wanted it to do. It didn't go as deep uh, and the writing felt a little juvenile so and then the sad the sad report of this video uh, I ended up DNFing praise and the there's two main issues well there's one main issue and then something that kind of set me over the edge so the heroine in this is extremely uh, exhausting to read from so in the beginning of the story he she I think I updated you when I was through the prologue but she goes to um, his her ex-boyfriend's dad's house and he thinks that she is like there to be um, a sub and she's not she's just there to get the check and so he kind of like makes her get on her knees and all that kind of stuff and when he realizes his mistake he's very apologetic and then he offers her a job as like an actual secretary and then they enter into a romantic relationship um, and she was just so exhausting to read from and she constantly, it was like a cycle of constant just like beating herself down and talking about how she wasn't good enough and how like her insecurities just never stopped uh, and it was exhausting. Like it was exhausting to read that. Like I get, we all have insecurities, right? We all, especially around a new relationship in something like this, it can be anxiety inducing I guess but it just she just never shut up and like I get where the author was trying to go because the idea of um praise is that it, it like quiets all of the anxieties and things like that but it just didn't work because like she just never it just never shut up she just never shut up and there's a scene early on in the book where she tells him your son like really did a number on me like he destroyed my self-esteem he was very verbally abusive to me she didn't say it in so many words but like it's very obvious and she see he sees her with his son and she becomes she like kind of cowers from him and she becomes very small and like typical signs of someone who at the very least is uncomfortable in someone's presence and he f then forces her to go on a date with I guess forces her but like heavily implies that she should go on a date with um puts her in a situation where she's forced to say yes basically to go on a date with his son despite knowing all of these things already because he wants to like distance himself and like he thinks that she's the best option for his son uh and sees that his son wants her back so he like pushes her to go on a date with him and I just don't like that that just like really put me over the edge I didn't like it um I didn't appreciate it I get like wanting to distance yourself because that is your son's ex-girlfriend but why did you have to push her to go on a date with someone that you know makes her feel bad about herself and also makes her uncomfortable so I DNF'd it it was just not 
good. Like it, it was going to be standard for me, I think. I think the most it would have gotten was a three star if I had finished. Uh, and then that happened and it just like pissed me off. So I just like set it down. And then I did get 30-ish percent of the way through Sin and Discipline. And I'm enjoying this. Um, like I said, it's just kind of like a Dark Notes-esque story. Piano teacher student. She is enrolled in a course at this um, like fine arts college. And it's like a summer course. And she, if she becomes, if she's the winner at the end of the course, um, she will have a place at this fine arts college. And he's the teacher. And it's fine like it's kind of standard for these sorts of stories good it's readable it's standard <laughs> so I mean I am kind of disappointed at this point like I'm glad that I've had a five star but none of these stories have like blown me out of the water hopefully sin and discipline will get better like I said I'm only 30% of the way through and it's quite long I think it's over 400 pages and then uh we'll see how priest goes so <sighs> hi friends I am 35% of the way through Priest and now I'm just kind of convinced that I don't like romance anymore because I'm really not enjoying this and I, I don't know why I'm struggling so much with romance recently like I feel like every video that I have done in the past like two months I have liked maybe two books out of like every five video I've done like it just I'm just not enjoying what I'm reading and I don't know what it is like I don't know what the problem is uh, let's go back I finished Sin and Discipline I don't know if I ever updated you that on that I enjoyed this to begin with I think the problem that I had was that this is supposed to be like this student teacher BDSM relationship and it was compared to Dark Notes and so I kind of went in it's unfair to like compare it to Dark Notes because I feel like Pam Godwin is like She's, you just don't, you just don't compare, right? Like, that's a, an unfair expectation because Pam Godwin is fantastic at writing, like, taboo romances. We didn't really see a lot of the, like, BDSM actually being important. And in the beginning, it felt very selfish on the hero's part. Um, like, the way he talked very much gave me the vibe that, like, he's a dom in a selfish way, which I don't love. Like, that's not kind- that's not what, like, a dom sub-relationship is meant to be. Um, so I didn't- I didn't really like that, and I just- I'm finding that with like these taboo relationships, they just don't really do much for me because we know that the tabooness is gonna go away, right? So like in this story, she is trying to get this scholarship. We know she's gonna get it. And then we know that they're no longer gonna be a student teacher anymore. And we know that her family, like her brother is gonna get over it. Um, so, I mean, I also, <sighs> I'm gonna get into spoiler territory because this really bothered me um and I don't know if I like I don't know how I feel and I don't know if this really bothered me because of my like personal connection but the heroine's father has Alzheimer's his wife died when the he the heroine was pretty young and <sighs> the hero's sister committed suicide and for all the years of um like since that happened he's thought that it was the heroine's brother uh that he was like in they were in love and that he broke her heart and she committed suicide because of that at the end of the book we find out through videotapes that she had that the hero's sister had a romantic relationship with her father with the heroine's father um because he was her piano teacher but he was he had early onset alzheimer's and he started to believe that she was his wife and so he was essentially abusing her um and then that because she knew that he didn't really he didn't really recognize that as hip he didn't know that she was her and not his wife so she kind of took her own life because she felt like she was taking advantage of him and like i don't like that and i have a very personal connection with alzheimer's i think a lot of people have a personal connection with alzheimer's and i just didn't enjoy this plot line and it's not necessarily that like 
I think that this is problematic in some way. Um, it just made me feel bad. Like, I don't tend to like reading stories with characters that have Alzheimer's because my Papa's death was so recent and it was from Alzheimer's and all of that. So it's very hard for me to 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 read about. Um and yeah, so I just I didn't really like that storyline. Um but altogether like it was a fine story. I think it didn't meet my expectations. It didn't quite do the Dom sub relationship how I wanted it done. And then we get into Priest, and we kind of have the same dynamic there. He's a priest, and he's moved. His his sister committed suicide when he was younger uh, because she was being abused by someone in the Catholic Church. He moves back to his town, this small town, to, like, reform the church and make it a safe space. And then the heroine, she moves to this town, after having left her like super rich family that she had an arranged marriage and you know all that kind of stuff with. She moves, she becomes a um, stripper and she starts working at like a private club for like rich men or whatever. So she moves to this town and she goes to a confessional one day. Tyler is the priest overseeing it or whatever and she confesses like her sexualness I guess like she's uh cheated she helped cheat she helped a guy cheat on his wife I guess um and so she's like slowly confessing these sexual desires and her sexual nature and this like gets him worked up and we see a bunch of instances of him like masturbating and they finally have some scenes together um and the thing that's irritating me, we're 30% of the way through. We're in his head the whole time, by the way. There's two things that are bothering me. One is like this, like, I'm an ultra feminist that he try that he brings up literally every paragraph. Anytime he has a thought about doing some sort of like um, dominating over her, he's like, but I'm a feminist, but I'm a feminist, like, I was in women's studies, like, I'm a feminist, I'm an ally, I'm a feminist, it's kind of fucking annoying, but mostly the thing that's bothering me is that he is constantly talking about how guilty and ashamed he is, like, his two thoughts are like, I want to bang her, I want to tie her up and bang her, and I'm, I feel so guilty that I want to tie her, tie her up and bang her, and I'm breaking my vows, and it's fucking annoying. I cannot stand, this is the same issue that I had with praise. I cannot stand this waffling back and forth. I cannot stand someone who's constantly like downing themselves or constantly feeling guilty or ashamed or like they're not good enough. I hate that. I hate reading from a point of view where it's just negative all the time. It's It just feels so draining to read from. And the fact that he's constantly talking about this moral dilemma and how he doesn't feel like he should be able to preach to people and like I'm sure that that is a hard thing and that's literally like the taboo of the of the thing uh, I'm sure that's hard but it's irritating for me that like in other aspects of this book it is very pro-sexuality very pro like he literally teaches sermons about the positives of sexuality and being open with your sexuality to men and to the church itself and he's talking about how he's going to reform the church and it's going to be you know all it's going to be better it's not going to be as repressed but for himself he's so just irritating to read from like I just and there was a moment where he goes he's basically like he runs he works out really hard he does all of these things to like punish himself and he goes to the church and he has this moment where he feels like God's watching him and listening to him and so he um feels like God's forgiveness or whatever and I thought after that like all of that would go away but it just like got worse and I'm kind of a little bit tired of listening to it or tired of reading it um and I'm hoping that like this goes away if this is the entire conflict of the book it's gonna drive me fucking nuts because it's literally them smashing him feeling guilty about it and that's it so I'm hoping that we get beyond that at some point in regards to like the 
religious aspect if you are like vehemently against religion like you don't want to read anything about religion you don't want to read about like the love of god or anything like that like anything to do with positive positivity in religion or anything like that like this is not going to be the book for you because it's very clear and I think in the author's note in the beginning of the book the author talks about how she used to be Catholic she was raised in a Catholic church so I don't know like her connection to her spirituality or anything like that but it's very clear that like the main character feels like like he um enjoys being in the church he feels the love of God all of that kind of stuff so like if you don't want to read that this is very much not for you. It doesn't bother me too much um because that 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 sort of stuff just doesn't bother me. I don't mind reading about that but it's definitely like not for someone that just can't stand that sort of talk. Um it just it's just irritating me in other ways um and like I gotta be honest like the this and this is the issue that I had with um sin and discipline like it's just not hot to me and I don't know if it's because I just read it constantly and so I need I don't know I don't know what it is it's just not there for me I kind of felt this way when I read the other series by Sierra Simone uh the one with the, the cover that has the boobs and the thing uh rose in the middle uh thorn chapel whatever the first one in that one is called I felt the same way I was like this is not hot like we have group sex scenes we have like rituals and shit going on and I just didn't really feel it didn't do anything for me or to me um so yeah I'm just not super loving it I don't know I don't know what the problem is I don't know if it's a me thing or what but I know that like a lot of the reviews are like oh this is so smutty and those are usually no goes for me if a story is just constantly if everybody talks about how smutty a story is I Mm, it probably isn't going to have the things that I want but there are people who my tastes align with in regards to levels of smut and emotional growth that enjoy this so it's just he's exhausting to be in the head of um but I'm going to probably just update you when I'm done because like I'm so close to the middle point there's no point in me updating you at the 50% mark we already know what's going to happen he's gonna have some sort of realization about his true purpose and that he shouldn't be in the church just because he wants to do better for his what his sister or whatever he's gonna find another way to like participate in the community or something and then they're gonna leave the church and then they're gonna get married and It's like five minutes later. I looked up a bunch of Goodreads reviews of like one and two stars. Um, I'm definitely DNFing this book. Every one and two star literally said the exact same issues that I had. I didn't touch on it in the original part because like I felt like I was alone in it. Uh, and I didn't know if it was just me but like the heroine is just creepy to me honestly like she confesses to becoming a stripper because she had too much money uh and she felt like it was all fake poor you and then she just like sets about seducing him and there's a moment where he's like um we can't do this by the way he says i can't multiple times and she still does it um and then she sets about seducing him and he says no and her response is okay I'll stop bothering you about my body even and uh, something about his chivalrous ways or some bullshit like that I don't like her I don't like the story I don't like the hero's point of view I'm just gonna DNF it uh, and that is just going to be what it is honestly I don't know what is going on I don't know if I've just picked up actually bad books back to back or what but I'm not impressed <laughs> with my reading recently and um I'm sorry that I didn't have two books for this video but it kind of just is what it is and I don't if I'm gonna hate it why continue reading it you know so definitely let me know down below your thoughts on anything that I read um I'm have the entirety of the sinner whatever series by Sierra Simone so let me know if I should continue or if they all are kind of like this uh and I'll move on but um let me know your thoughts if you don't have anything to say leave some sort of leave a broken heart uh down in the comments if you're looking for more content from me you can check out my Instagram or my podcast Instagram you can check out my podcast on all your favorite streaming platforms uh it is a horror podcast it's a lot of fun Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you guys in my next one.